I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain, just sing, just sing, just sing, 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 this is Heidi Moss Erickson, and welcome to Singing in the Brain, where today we are talking about prediction in singing, how your brain knows before you do. You experience predictions every single day. When you look at the paper to find out what the weather report's going to be, that is a prediction. And what you'd have to do to predict that is you would first collect a lot of data from many, many different sources. And you would graph that data from wind and temperature to figure out what the weather's going to be. And how that works is that that data is then put into different algorithms in a computer. Now, there's a lot of math in that kind of calculation. However, in the end, you know that on Wednesday, it is going to rain. Now, your brain does the exact same thing in terms of its prediction. Say I wanted to learn how to axe throw, something I've always wanted to do. Well, I would gather data from my memories and experiences of what an ax feels like. Maybe I'd practice with the target, lift weights, or get a coach. And all of that information will come into my brain where I can make connections and calculations, just like the algorithm on the computer. And that will give me a prediction. And all of these motor decisions are actually made before we have an action, and we aren't aware of all of these decisions. This figure is from a paper that showed that the onset of predictive information was almost eight seconds before the person had an awareness of that. So we generate through predictive pathways through our experiences. And automation, which is the goal, implies a more accurate prediction, like driving a car. And the more data we get to make our prediction, that's better. And so prediction is necessary for action. I can't axe throw if I haven't had a prediction. So singing like axe throwing is a motor skill. So therefore the brain functions exactly the same way. So we're collecting data from many, many places in our singing world. So we're obviously having sheet music, our voice teacher, um, our feelings about the music. We can think about our larynx, a character. Listening is very important for our singing brain. And of course, thinking about the colors our voice has. And All of these data points funnel into our practice, experience, our technical expertise, our linguistic selves, our background, emotion, observation, imagery, play, character, subtext, and it goes on and on and on. In other words, there are like infinite kinds of possibilities in the whole brain that feed into our singing life. So all of those data points come together to make connections and calculations for the singing brain. And just like the axe throwing example, motor decisions are made before we sing, and it generates a prediction as to what we should do. Now, the vocal motor system is the most complex behavior we have as humans. It involves the entire brain. And so we cannot consciously control all of those elements. There are over 100 muscles that need to be timed and regulated in a very strict manner to do what we do. And to that end, order and timing are then strictly coordinated in our brains, much more so than any other behavior we have. So this figure shows at time zero where your sound starts. But prior to that, all of those little, the lips, tongue, jaw, larynx, those are all the brain signals to tell the motor system what to do. So those are the predictions and there is an order and a timing to them. Now, Because it is complex, we have these feedback and feed forward mechanisms that are adding to our predictions of what to do in real time so that it can change on the fly. So I believe that what to attend to when in practice and performance is the holy grail because there's so many things we can think about. So that's why the more data we can give our brains to predict the merrier, the better. We need a lot of data, so we have a lot of options. I actually make the analogy to axe throwing because in a way, that's what we're doing. We're just practicing getting to targets in many different ways. So how can we optimize our prediction? Well, we can look at a singer's brain 
And I won't go into all these details. I'll save that for another episode. But the biology and evolution of our vocalization brains, first and foremost, is audiation. And what that means is basically hearing in your head, which we do at the unconscious level, meaning our auditory cortex area is active even right before we speak and sing. It's sending information to how we want to say something or sing something. And so we can use that in our predictive steps by taking a moment to hear in our heads what we want to sing. The second is also biology and evolutionarily related in the sense that we vocalize to communicate. And if we have a clear intention or purpose, that also adds predictive information. It can be something like, I love you, or I'm scared of that tiger. All of those things are intentions that give granular details to the brain on how to calculate a motor task. And lastly, there's affect, which I think is how we flavor an intention. We can say, I love you, or we can say, I love you. All of those little details give nuance to an intention that also feed into our predictive brain. And the more details, the merrier as usual. After all, we're singers, so of course we can include technical elements to our predictive process. We can separate components to better target specific elements like the vibrator, our larynx and our vocal folds, the resonator. We can play with vocal track shapes or our breath and how that relates to all three, even these, even though these are all integrated symbiotically and they're not separate, they influence each other and help each other. We can attend to one thing or another to help our predictive brain. And I highly encourage mixing it up whenever we're dealing with anything technical because variety and inversions and playing with dynamics gives the brain more information. It's like throwing the ax and throwing it a bit too hard. That is still information that we can use. So it's important to know mixing it up. So while we're mixing up all of these wonderful data entries into our brains to predict the best way to sing, we have to remember that humans are terrible multitaskers. So it's important to attend to one element at a time, to work in chunks, to dare to be reductionist, meaning it's okay to work on one passage and maybe play with intentions and affect or inversions or dynamics. And then also to include rest because rest is where our brain consolidates learning. So whether it's sleeping at night or meditating during the day or even taking a 10 second break, mindful break in between a motor task has been shown to consolidate learning. So in conclusion, I dare everybody to be an axe thrower, play and find joy so that your brains can find the best prediction to give you the optimal vocal output. <laughs>